And finally, ladies and gents, question 10. So they ask us um, to look at the circuit. They say the circuit below consists of uh, a 6 ohm and a 15 ohm resistor connected in parallel to an unknown resistor R in series, an emitter, a high resistance voltmeter, a closed switch and a battery are connected as shown. The resistance of the battery and the wires can be ignored. Right now, let's quickly have a look at it, ladies and gents. So they say the total power dissipated in the parallel part of the circuit is 50 watts. So meaning if we look at those two in parallel, they dissipate a total of 50 watts. Right, now they say determine or define the term power. Remember that we say power is the rate at which work is done. Okay, so now they say to us, calculate the effective resistance of the parallel combination. So we know, so if we want RP, right, I always say, well, you can, if we've got two resistors, it will be product of those resistors divided by the sum. So let's call that R1 and R2. Let's call that R3, right? So it will be R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So this will be 6 times 15 divided by 6 plus 15. Right, so let's find out. And by the way, nothing wrong if you decided to say 1 over R parallel is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Just remember to invert the answer once you get that. So I am going to say, well, this is 6 times 15. This is divided by 6 plus 15. And so that gives me a resistance of 4. To, okay, let's say 4.29 ohms. Okay, right. So that is the effective resistance of our parallel resistors. Okay, so let's go to the next one. They say, calculate the effective resistance, uh, rather the potential difference across the parallel, the resistors in parallel. Now, we know that both these resistors dissipate an amount of 50 watts right of power so i'm going to say well for 10.1.3 i know that power is equal to now note in this case right i'm looking for voltage and i have the resistance so i am going to say power is v squared over r please remember you are given those formulae right so this is going to be 50 i'm looking for the voltage and I know the resistance was 4.29. Okay, so let's cross multiply. So I'm going to have 50 times 4.29. Okay, and because I'm looking for V, I need to take the square root of that answer. So the square root of our answer will give us 14.65. Right, so that will give us 14.65 volts. Apologies for writing on uh, over that number there. Right, so that's 14.65 volts. Now they say to us, uh, calculate the current through resistor R. Okay, now that we've got the voltage, right, we can find out what the current is, the total current. Okay, so we can say for 10.1.4, that will be V is I times R. Our voltage is 14.65, right? It will be the total current passing through the combination of both of them. And we know that the resistance is 4.29, right? So what is that current then? So divide by 4.29 on either one. So that cancels with that. So 14.65 divided by 4.29. 
uh, that will give us 3.41 MPS. Right, and that's the total current that's flowing through our circuit. Right, now, um, and that will be flowing through resistor R, right? That's the total current. Now they say to us, the switch in the circuit is now opened, right? So if we open the switch, so that means that what we will be effectively doing is that once that switch is open, current can no longer pass through this resistor here. We are eliminating the 15 ohm resistor, right? Now they say to us, how will the reading on the voltmeter V be influenced uh, choose increase, decrease, or remain the same. Now notice, ladies and gents, that the resistance uh, R, right, of that resistor stays the same. Now, by removing a resistor in parallel, it means that I am actually increasing the resistance of the circuit, right? Now note in this case, so if I increase the resistance, remember the effective resistance was 4.29, but now it will be 6 ohms, right? And so I've increased the resistance of the circuit. What happens to the current? The current will decrease, and that means a lesser current passes, passes through this resistor, and so voltmeter V should decrease. Okay, so our answer there is it will decrease, all right, and they want us to explain that, right? Okay, so firstly, I'm going to say, well, the total resistance of the circuit will increase, okay, when we remove that resistor, right? And so what happens? So the current will decrease, I is equals to V over R, as I increase resistance, current will decrease, right? But now because V is equals to that current times the resistance R, uh, but because R stays constant, remains constant, and I mean the resistance of the resistor, right? The resistance of R stays constant. And so as a result, it means that our voltage will also decrease because of a decrease in current, right? And essentially, that is how we're going to explain that, ladies and gents, right? And finally, they say a geezer labeled 2000 watts is used for an average of five hours, okay? They say the cost of electricity is 80 cents per kilowatt. So, that's our rate. So the rate at which we pay for electricity is 80 cents. So that's going to be 0 0.8 of a rent, right? Per kilowatt hour. Okay. Now they say to us, calculate the energy used uh, by the geezer for five hours per day. Right. So we have got the amount of energy, right? So notice in this case that uh, we've got the power, which is 2,000 watts, okay? And we know that power is the rate at which work is done, okay? So power is work done divided by time, right? So... So the power is 2,000 watts, right? We want the energy, and in this case, we know it is 5 hours. So that's going to be 5 multiplied by 3,600, okay? Right, so in this case, that's 3,600, which is going to be the total amount of seconds that we have in five hours. So energy, right, is five times 3,600 times 2,000. Okay, so we get the amount of energy there, 
right? So remember, we've got 3,600 seconds in one hour, but we had five hours. So this would be 36 million, right? Yeah. So that would be the amount of energy that we would be uh, using in five hours. All right. And then finally, ladies and gents, they want us to calculate uh, the cost of electricity to operate the Giza for a month or with 30 days. Right. So now we know that we're going to say the cost is going to be the rate per kilowatt hour multiplied by the amount of energy that is dissipated uh, over that time. Right. So in this case, the rate... We said this was 0 0.8 multiplied by the energy in kilowatt hours, ladies and gents, right? So the energy is 2,000 watts, but we need to convert that to kilowatts, right? So 2,000 watts is 2 kilowatts. Kilo means 1,000. So this would be 2 kilowatts, okay? But now we need to uh, express the time in hours multiplied by the time, which is five hours per day. So this would be two kilowatt multiplied by five, which is in hours. Right. This is the cost per day. Um, so let's do that quickly. That's 0 0.8 times two times five. So that gives me eight rands per day. So that would be an amount of eight rands. But now remember they said we need to calculate the cost for 30 days. This is per day. Okay. Now for 30 days, all we're going to do is take that amount. Okay. I'm going to say 8 multiplied by 30, okay, and that will give us 240 rands, okay, so that's the amount of electricity that we will use in a span of 30 days. Ladies and gents, and that brings us to the end of this question paper. Please remember you also are given all of those uh, formulae, you know, to use. And please, if you've got any questions, you are more than welcome to throw it in the comment section and I'll, and I'll try to answer those questions for you. But of course, if you are struggling with maths and science and you want to get in touch with us so that we can help you out with our services, uh, please go to the description of this video and you'll get all the details that you need. All right. Otherwise, from me for now, please don't forget to subscribe and like and please don't forget to also tell others right, that Malume is still the plug. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Shop shop.